Thank you for coming on. Dr. Phil joining us here. Uh, no stranger to the spotlight. Dr. Phil has had uh, such a successful run. It's pretty incredible. And he's doing a little bit more. He's uh, expanding the scope of what he's doing, which we'll get to in a second. But Phil, I, I just, just as the putting a doctor hat on for a second, for those of us who are preparing for a possible second wave of this coronavirus or preparing for winter in different parts of Southern California and around the country, what advice do you have to get us through it? Well, I'll tell you, it's really going to be a, 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 a tough situation because this quarantine is stretching out so much and it looks like some of it's getting extended, particularly for the kids, Ryan. Uh, and being out of school is a major, major problem for these kids because there's an educational gap there's a social development gap, and these are things that aren't gonna show up uh, in, in a major way, sometimes for 10 years. So I really encourage everybody to stay connected, even if it's electronically. You know, being uh, in quarantine doesn't mean isolation. We've got to stay connected, we've gotta stay communicating, and we can't feel like we're the only ones that are lonely or depressed or alone. We've got to give it a voice and talk to each other and reach out to people that you think maybe are really suffering. The fastest way to fill up any void you're feeling is to give away that which you need the most. Mm. So if you're feeling empty and alone, go down to your neighbor, go down to somebody that lives a few floors below you, knock on their door, step back, you know, eight, 10 feet, whatever, and say, listen, you don't know me, but I, I live, I'm your neighbor. I just wanted to stop by, by and say, hello. I know you live alone. Is there something I can do for you? I'm going to the store. Can I help you? You probably don't want to give me your phone number, but here's mine. If you'd like to talk, give me a call. Do you FaceTime? I'd love to visit with you. Just give away what you need the most. We don't have to go through this by ourselves but we need to be the one that reaches out to somebody that maybe is in a worse situation than we're in. It's so interesting to hear you say that because if I were to have somebody come up to when I lived in an apartment complex and say all those things pre-pandemic, I would have thought they were crazy. I'm like, what, what, what are you have you thought? Well, okay, I've got a weirdo living, got a weirdo here. living next to me, but now <laughs> it really, I mean, it shouldn't be like that anyway, but now it really makes sense. And I think it's- Have you noticed when you're out walking now, people that would never have even looked up before are saying hi. Yeah, it's uh, true. Because we really are cognizant of the fact that, look, another human being. It's true. Uh, yeah. and you know, in certain parts of the country, it really is that way. So we, we need to make a conscious effort to have connection with people, even if it's from across the street or across the track or whatever. We need to be connected and realize we're in this together. Dr. Phil with us. I could listen to him for hours. We're going to uh, come back in a second and talk about the animal rescue show that premieres today on CBS All Access next. We're with uh, Dr. Phil this morning. The man has adopted a couple of puppies during the pandemic. You got two I see here, Blue and Einstein, Phil. Yes, Blue and Einstein. And I, and let me tell you, Ryan, you know Robin, and she's not big as a minute. And I, I adopted these two puppies when I was down at one of the animal sanctuaries that we're working with. And they, I could hold them in my hands. I've got them home, and they're like four months old now, and they can damn near look me in the eye. Their <laughs> paws are huge. They're like 12 double E shoe size. <laughs> they're gonna, we're going to put saddles on them for the grandkids, but they are the sweetest pups ever. <laughs> And I'm real big on rescue. Don't don't buy rescue, rescue, rescue. Do these dogs sleep in the bed with you and Robin? Well, they will. They're at a trainer right now, out at a horse farm. <laughs> okay, you got to train them for the house. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a process, but they will because that's a big debate. You know, we talk about that often here. Georgia is my black lab fill, and so I. I do let her sleep in the bed, but she's so smart to know sometimes to get in her own bed. If I give her a look, she'll get up and go get in her own bed. Well, we had a rescue Maggie for 13 years who you've actually met and we lost her after 13 years of age and she slept in the bed and you know, we're from Texas and she's like our hillbilly doorbell our, our hillbilly <laughs> burglar alarm. Anything moves, those dogs are all over it. So they do sleep in bed with us. Well, tell us about this series. Uh, we are big animal lovers here on this show, and it's called That Animal Rescue Show. Tell me about it, Phil. 
Well, don't you think that's a clever name? I mean, yeah. a lot of high power executives got together to name this that animal <laughs> rescue show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's how people are gonna, they're going to say that anyway have you seen that animal rescue show so we just named yeah. it that that's great but brian here's the thing this this show particularly you'll see in the first episode these are sanctuaries where animals that uh, were born with defects they maybe have a deformed claw or paw or spinal problem um, or they've been severely abused or whatever have been taken into a sanctuary. And you'll see in the first episode, we bring out children that are very much the same way. And we've, we've got animals that have spinal problems, so they're in wheelchairs for their back legs. And we bring out children that are the same way and they see how happy these animals are and how much they run around and play with each other. And, and they go, wow, if they can be that happy, then I can. And we, we've got a turkey, for example, that has a claw that is really malformed. And we call it the special fin. And we have some little girls that have hands that were malformed at birth. And we say, we've got a turkey that has a special fin like you do. And they just giggle and hug this turkey. And then they go around telling everybody where they used to kind of hide their hand come look, they've got a special fin like I do. And they just, they bond and they rescue each other. It's so amazing. We have blind horses. Uh, we, we have paralyzed goats. And it's absolutely inspirational to see how these animals rescue these children and these children rescue these animals. And to watch the bond is the most moving thing I've ever seen in my life. What a beautiful concept and what a mm -hmm. remarkable idea. Had that been a form of treatment, Phil, before it was a series? Well, you know, there's always been equine therapy where, you know, patients, particularly with anxiety and depression, work with horses because uh -huh. you can't get something that weighs 10 times more than you do to do something by force. You have to kind of bond and and be on the same wavelength it's the same way with these animals they sense if the children are tense and standoffish but as soon as they relax mm. and and reach out with a soft hand the animals just melt into them and so the children learn by this feedback if i go with the flow things start to work well and I, I think that it's something that is going to really inspire a whole concept of, of working with children. And we, we, we see it with autistic children that we've brought out there uh, with animals that are so scared and afraid. And you put an autistic child with this animal. And for the first time, the animal turns to the child and you see the two of them over there and then pretty soon they're walking together, then playing together. Mm. And I'm talking horses and children. It's amazing mm. what they do. I, I think there's great power uh, that can develop out of what we're seeing here. Thrilled to have you on to talk about such a great idea. That Animal Rescue Show, Cleverly, premieres today on CBS <laughs> All Access. And Dr. Phil, weekdays, you can check your local listings. Phil, great to see you and continued success, my friend. Same to you, Ryan. You're the hardest working man in entertainment. Appreciate you, buddy. Take care. Bye -bye. So long.